U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, John Bolton. Mr. Ambassador, nice to see you this morning. Glad to be here. Well, you penned a piece saying that the case for striking Iran is growing. But I don't think there's any chance that Iran is going to be talked out of its nuclear program. I think that's been true for about the last seven or eight years. That Iran is moving toward a military dictatorship. Now, that is, you know, that is our, our view. And we hope to try to influence the decision making within Iran. Um, and that is our goal. Investigative journalist Wayne Matson thinks possible threats coming from Iran are exaggerated in the West. What Iran has now is uh, uh, uranium, 3% uh, enriched uranium. They're uh, uh, taking that up to 20% enrichment, as, as they claim it's for uh, their uh, medical nuclear medicine purposes. Um, also, 20% is what's used for nuclear reactor uh, for the power purposes. You need 90% enriched uranium to create a nuclear weapon. So all this, uh, these complaints from the Western countries about Iran uh, striving for a nuclear weapon, I think, is just hyping the situation. There was also the issue of uh, trading uh, the uh, Iran's uh, under-enriched uranium for 20% enriched uranium in a third country. Mm -hmm. And apparently it looked like France was the intended country where that would take place. Iran said, wait a minute, we don't want the exchange to happen in France. We want it to happen in Iran. Obviously, they didn't trust President Sarkozy. Corporate media, of course, is uh, really uh, uh, hyping on behalf of the White House, the Pentagon, those who have a vested interest in ratcheting up tensions with Iran and, and would like to see all these negotiations fail. All right, welcome back, everybody. Back to that chilling announcement from Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad today. He came out and claimed to the people of Iran that they are now a nuclear state. Ahmadinejad says his nation has made its first batch of higher enriched uranium, which is a step closer to being able to create fuel that could be used in a nuclear bomb. But Hillary, I, you wonder who's in charge at the State Department over there because uh, Hillary uh, Clinton said that it, Iran's becoming a military dictatorship. Well, military dictatorships didn't seem to stop her from the overthrow of President Zelay in Honduras on her watch. Uh, in a military uh, coup, and, and, and she's refusing to allow President Aristide of Haiti back in that country when the country really needs him in a time of need. So she's being very hypocritical here in accusing other countries of being dictatorships. What? But I would point out she's in Saudi Arabia right now. I wonder where she is when it comes to the Saudi religious police who've been harassing over the last few days people, shop owners who sell uh, Valentine's cards and Valentine's gifts. Uh, and uh, they, they've been known to be quite nasty, the Saudi religious police. And also uh, her friends in India, uh, they've taken no action against the Hindu militants, the Shiv Sena party, who's basically doing the same thing, attacking religious minorities and also people selling Valentine's cards. So she seems to be quite selective in, uh, in her uh, outrage. Your Majesty, I am very honored to be here on behalf of President Obama and the American people. Not the law of the jungle. So the law of the jungle. Terry Michael, director of the Washington Center for Politics and Journalism, spoke to us. He says Americans see the decision as Obama breaking his promises. All of us who voted for Obama thought we were getting an anti-war president. It's why he won the nomination against Hillary Clinton, because she had supported the war. He hadn't. And it's why he won the election, because the American people, the base hated the war, base Democrats, and the independents overwhelmingly opposed the war. So he couldn't have made a bigger mistake. The real problem is ratcheting up a war when we have this disastrous economic situation. So people are saying not only, I don't want to send more 19 and 20 year olds to die, they're also saying, why are we spending billions on a war when we have all these economic problems? And Afghanistan has nothing to do with our national security any more than Iraq had anything to do with our national security. But what it will do is this, it will unleash the nuclear genie. And so for all those Americans out there tonight who say, you know what, taking on Iran's a good thing. I just told you if we take on Iran, we're going to use nuclear weapons. And if we use nuclear weapons, the genie ain't going back in the bottle until an American city is taken out by an Islamic weapon in retaliation. So tell me, you want to go to war with Iran, pick your city. 
Pick your city. Tell me which one you want gone. Seattle, L.A., Boston, New York, Miami. Pick one, because at least one's going. And that's something we should all think about before we march down this path of insanity that George Bush has us headed on. I'm impressed here. Anyway, there was a meeting among the, among the items, among the items considered and rejected, which is why the New Yorker did not publish it on grounds that it wasn't accepted. One of the items was why not every, there was a, a dozen ideas proffered how to, how to trigger a war. The one that interested me the most was why don't we build, we in our shipyard, build four or five Iranian boats that look like Iranian PT boats, put Navy SEALs on them, with a lot of arms, and the next time one of our boats goes through the Straits of Hormuz, start a shoot-up. 